as you may be aware uh, by now is that uh, there are massive pressures uh, uh, that are experienced on the foundation and also the impounding structure which is the dam uh, and it could be either an earth dam or a, a gravity dam or whatever kind of uh, impounding structure uh, the designer chooses to use so they are all all manner of uh, uh, high pressure uh, so if this is your dam that is your dam this is your dam structure so you will impound water so if this if this is for example maybe 300 meters you can see a lot of uh, uh, if you are to draw the uh, the the pressure down here would be would be 300 rho g h times 300 so it's about 10 that's 3000 kpa now if you are to find the four if you are to find the area the the pressure this is gonna act uh, re that would be half times three thousand times three hundred and that's about uh, ninety thousand divided by two for about four thousand forty five thousand uh, kPa that's a lot of force and uh, that's on the uh, on the this is on the side alone on this but now if you were to uh, to calculate the pressure on the floor where this is 3000 the red lake is so this is 3000 kilonewton now if you are to take maybe per unit area and this these are usually in length of of uh, of uh, kilometers so let's say uh, um uh, let's let's take some ki uh, maybe this the length is 50 kilometers kilometers and then the width the width is uh, usually maybe up to 35. So the pressure on the floor would be again 3000. 3000 times 50 times 35. Uh, pressure uh, times area. Uh, but Please make sure you can hear me. The internet seems to be having some trouble, and also on the floor. So uh, you need to be very careful, and uh, that's why the uh, the investigation has to be uh, done uh, carefully. So geology plays a key role in planning, selection and evaluation of any particular site for important engineering structures such as dams, weirs, and powerhouses. Efforts are always made to develop a competent geological and geotechnical investigation plan to ca characterize uh, site conditions reasonably, if not precisely. Uh, the, in this investiga the investigations include both field uh, investigations and laboratory testing where former addresses both surface and subsurface uh, investigations uh, basically uh, you need to know the strength as in on site uh, so the uh, this uh, the surface uh, 
the surface conditions uh, will be addressed by geological uh, investigation. Um, uh, sometimes you can uh, you can even use a drone. Once you select an area, uh, you put some pictures up to see uh, the terrain. How does it look? Uh, the surface. Uh, what is happening? What kind of rocks? What can you see? And also geotechnical investigations. Uh, now you drill inside the the soil uh, to to uh, to deal with the subsurface uh, 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 matters. So basically, what we are saying uh, on the on the surface, if this is your terrain, then here on the surface you do do geological uh, geological. geological investigation and inside now when you are dealing your uh, when you for example uh, you're taking uh, so as uh, the surface investigation this include uh, the geotechnical geomorphological mapping engineering geological mapping and rock discontinuity surveys for the recording of discontinuity characteristics. Uh, and so, so uh, it's important uh, because the we might have a rock of very uh, varied uh, geological makeup, the a lot of discontinuity. And so, so you need to be able to map uh, to see exactly uh, where is the weakness. Because you can imagine a pressure of uh, of three thousand. You remember what we said: three thousand times fifty times thirty-five. But these are kilometers, so you have to multiply by one thousand. You can imagine how much force is that. If it finds a, a place of weakness, then uh, likely uh, there would be a disaster. So, so you have to be able to map even the faults uh, to the detail. You need to know roughly how many, if there are 700, 1,000, uh, to the detail, uh, because that's important. So an engineering geology map should be prepared to define geological conditions <coughs> of the site, such as distribution of various types of soils, and the bedrock and uh, comprehensive image of geology in an area. Uh, this map pro uh, provides the information about uh, major geologic hazards, bedrock, uh, geology, presence of water, yes, you need that, and seepage locations, uh, structural geology location, uh, location and orientation of discontinuities, geomorphology features, and uh, Sufficial, uh, yeah. So, all we are trying to say is that uh, you need to get as much information as is is possible in terms of the orientation, the makeup of the rock. Are there any fault lines? Where is the orientation? Orientation gives us the uh, potential line of weakness, you know. And and uh, once all these are mapped into the detail, then you're able to think of mechanisms to provide that. So if you find, for example, there are faults uh, or there are lines of weakness, uh, your first uh, the, the f uh, job of a geotechnical engineer is to is to uh, to make sure how to think of how you can steal the uh, the project. So this map provides a basis uh, for planning of onward subsurface investigations to interpret the subsurface profile, uh, conducting uh, of discontinuity surveys at available rock outcrops is always preferred during geological mapping as this information provides a basis uh, for rock mass characterization and classification. Interpretation of rock structures development uh, in three of three dimension uh, geological models. Regional engineering uh, geological maps are prepared on a scale of uh, the scale shown there. A little reservoir, siege dam sites, borough areas and tunnel maps are prepared 
uh, in a scale of one to five thousand <coughs> and then uh, one to one uh, one to five hundred uh, so and one to one hundred uh, respectively so for huge dams uh, no this one little reservoirs okay so you can use all these things you can uh, any of the scales shown uh, no 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 for the reservoirs huge dams of size to borrow pp one to one five thousand then <coughs> from one to five hundred to one to one hundred scales uh, you can use for trenches open pits and excavation uh, parts uh, geological units, uh, especially soils, are better plotted on uh, 1 to 1 to 5,000 or 1 to 10,000 scale, and bed bedrock on 1 to 20,000 or 1 to 30,000. This map provides uh, information, uh, local as well as regional. Uh, structures. Uh, that may influence the onward design. The orientation data of discontinuities also help to estimate the direction of regional stresses. Uh, okay, such that the major stress push process sigma one is considered to be the direction that bisects the angle between uh, joint sets of particular area. Uh, the orientation of uh, regional stresses help to finalize the layout of the underground foundation. So all of us are familiar with, or you should be, uh, the stresses on a plane. If you have uh, an element uh, from the most circle, this is sigma 1, and this is sigma 3. Sigma 1 acts on the, is called the major principle stress acting on the major principle plane. And this is the, uh, Sigma 3 is the minor principle st uh, stress acting on the minor principle plane. So all these ideas are usually quite useful to, to try to help us. Because also to know even the direction of Sigma 1 and Sigma 3 is important to, uh, as the, uh, to characterize in situ. So normally, <coughs> if you want to know the, the sigma 1, you do what is called pressure meter test. Sigma, the direction of sigma 1, and and of course it, it's uh, quite, uh, seems quite simple in practice, but uh, it's quite difficult as well. So in once you dig your pit, uh, you, this is the bottom of the pit, so where you have determined that you want to know uh, the direction of the of the stress, for example, the direction of the. So you do what is called pressure pressure meter test is a, a some. You put some you dip in some equipment. The equipment has a has uh, some end here and you pump water uh, you can use water and I uh, think uh, uh, mostly water or some fluid this fluid is going to exert uh, the uh, pressure on this side and also on that side So the uh, you you do that until if you're able to get a crack. Uh, uh, this place is somehow able to crack. Uh, you're able to get some crack on the on this side or on that direction. Now, if you get a crack. Then this this is kind of a rubber. It there will be an impression left on the on this because imagine you are doing this uh, at a depth uh, very far from where you can see. 
So either you send cameras or uh, normally it's a rubber and uh, if it's rock uh, there will be some impression left on the equipment you are using so you'll be able to tell <coughs> you'll be able to tell uh, the that the crack has occurred so i need you to tell me where the crack occurs is it sigma 1 is that value sigma 1 or sigma 3 and why Anyone? Uh, we only say uh, we only put this in 2D, but in actuality, uh, in actuality, in reality, uh, this is a is supposed to be a sphere. The more circle is actually supposed to be a sphere, such that this sigma one. Uh, normally, this is what we do sigma one and sigma three, but in fact, uh, there is always a sigma two because this is uh, uh, normally we deal with three uh, D and all these are 90 degrees apart. So once you know this, uh, you, you prefer to know sigma, the direction of sigma one, and in fact, also the direction of sigma uh, two. And that's important. Uh, that detail is important uh, when you're doing the uh, dam mapping. Now, subsurface investigations uh, include direct methods of uh, field exp explorations uh, comprising uh, the borehole drilling, uh, you do pitting, sampling, editing, and indirect methods, which are uh, mainly the application of geophysical methods. Uh, these are uh, 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 mostly because the process is actually very expensive and capital intensive. Uh, the <coughs> uh, excuse me the <coughs> actually even for the geotechnical uh program of uh, doing just uh, uh a sink pool house uh, in a city like Nairobi or Machakos uh not very expensive but people always want to escape because they think that process is expensive uh it ca actually can be even for a simple house can take you like maybe uh, up to two, three million, or even five million for just a, a simple eight or a few stories. So I just want to give you the, the idea. So if a simple house that like that, how about a, a dam could cost uh, billions or even uh, maybe billions or even trillions, de depending on the on the scale. Uh, so uh, this is a capital intensive. Uh, so you have to choose uh, the kind of information you must get at uh, the most important, but also at the most uh, con uh, cost effective uh, way that is possible. In fact, uh, here calls for experience as well. Uh, 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 because actually, if you start to uh, implement the project and you realize that uh, probably the site is not very good, you have to relocate after uh, that, most likely after you spend a lot of money, uh, then the contractors or the investors will go broke, and this has happened uh, in reality. So, in part, experience is important. All these things you need to consider carefully because they are res these are resources you are uh, uh, using uh, to 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 achieve all these. So, a uh, once you decide the kind of uh, samples you want to collect the drilling, the editing you want to do, uh, you just do what is necessary. And then additional information uh, can be obtained through indirect methods, uh, like the geophysical methods I've said. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> like the seismic uh, refraction or the lexical resistivity, uh, ground penetration radar, ETC. So you use, uh, you can send kind of the wa waves into the rock and depending on the speed i think you maybe you should know all these things the geophysical methods the uh, surveys electrical resistivity uh, ground penetration radar etc all now these are indirect methods of uh, trying to 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 get information about the rock uh, about uh, so so once 
Uh, but normally these methods cannot be used in isolation because we are using geophysical methods. We are using indirect method. Uh, that means you are not measuring what you need directly. You are using, uh, for example, you are sending waves down there, and depending on their speed, uh, you interpret that, okay, this is continuous or this is not. While it is true that you can get useful information out of them, but because they are not unique, you are using an indirect method, one thing can be interpreted uh, many, in many ways, and yet is still correct. And because, uh, like I've, I've told you, that uh, you are using uh, money, people's money, and a uh, lot of money at, at it, so you need to be careful that whatever you're interpreting is exactly, there is no room for equivoc uh, equivocation. There's no room for thinking that, okay, this is either this or that. You know, once, once you do the survey, and you suspect that this is a fault. You have to know that it's a fault. It can no, you cannot say they say either fault or you know, yeah. But now this is a weakness of your physical methods because you are not exactly measuring what you need. You are using an indirect interpretation uh, to have an idea of what that is. So this is why you cannot use the geophysical methods in isolation. In fact, uh, geophysical methods are relatively much cheaper. But they, ca are non they are normally only used as complementary mechanisms. After complementary to uh, the uh, the survey itself, the geotechnical, if it is drilling, if it is editing. So once you drill, you know the nature of the rock. Then you do the geophysical methods to simply to augment. Because once you see what is there, and then you interpret the geophysical surveys, and maybe they agree then you know exactly what you're talking about. But you cannot, uh, even though geophysical methods are, 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 uh, are uh, useful, you cannot replace them for the actual exploration uh, because of the weakness I have elucidated. Also, the, uh, the geophysical methods are useful because uh, one, they are cheap, relatively cheaper. <coughs> Excuse me. And two, because they <coughs> are... Uh, you can scan a wide uh, a range of area, a wide area, in fact, uh, within a very short time. You can imagine if you are to drill and dig and, you know, uh, uh, record the ball log for every pit, you know. Even one pit would take a lot of time to, to, to dig. So, uh, once so this is why you have to complement. And actually, in fact, it is impossible to dig all pit everywhere that you re require. And that's why you there has to be a plan, and you have to dig pits in to so that you can get a representative uh, information of the entire area, and you augment this information by uh, geophysical methods. Now, geophysical methods can scan a large wide of area, uh, a wide area, in fact, uh, within a very short time, and save time and money, uh, like I have said. So the purpose of uh, method. Uh, both exploration method is to obtain maximum south surface information to <coughs> excuse me to characterize the site for its suitability and stability for particular engineering structure so uh, routinely uh, so <coughs> i don't know what i was trying to say there So you have to assess the uh, suitability of this uh, carefully. So these are some of the uh, ways. So the geophysical methods, uh, you use, uh, of course, a computer. You send some waves there, and then you're able to interpret uh, the information uh, you get from the uh, uh, from the survey. So, so now here there are several methods. There is what you call a mass M A S W uh, mass uh, something surface wave mass something surface wave. Okay, generally <coughs> you send su uh, waves and then once uh, the the waves can be refracted, reflected, and all these things, and then you you have a receiver. 
uh, to check the behavior of the wave after it travels to the medium and then f from there you can infer the ca uh, the, ca uh, the uh, the whatever you can infer the kind of uh, makeup or the behavior or the or the characteristic characteristic of the if it were a rock or whatever material we are talking about now s uh, so augmenting or uh, the geophysical methods you can do a test fit and if you do a test fit normally uh, you get samples which you can take to the lab and the, uh, this we will talk about also in uh, geotechnical engineering where now you there's what you call rqd uh, depending on how much rock you're able to uh, recover uh, intact rock you're able to cover uh, rqd is called is rock rock quality designate so depending on the length and how intact the rock is uh, you are able to say uh, to you able to uh, assess that this the quality of the rock is either uh, intact or uh, you are able to say something about the quality of the rock in terms of the strength now add it a horizontal pit so normally you do uh, normally you do pits going down so that's your pit now add it are uh, horizontal pits i think we had introduced this before <coughs> and in fact they are more <coughs> expensive to drill than uh, uh, the normal pit these so these are adits is horizontal pits and these are pits now now these adits would give us uh, information about uh, horizontal stratification to be specific because in uh, actually stratification can also be uh, vertical so if if uh, if the rocks are in, if the layers if the stratification in this lay in this way then when you're d drilling uh, if you d if you do an edit in this direction then probably you're able to see this horizontal stratification uh, it has to be we have to be specific about the kind of stratification because in fact it's also possible to have a vertical stratification uh, so I believe this is a continuation from the so routinely and uh, extensively conducted subsurface investigations <coughs> are subsurface drilling so subsurface drilling and like i've said you cannot uh, replace this uh, with uh, the geophysical methods so it is generally practiced that borehole must be must extend to the deepest substratum that may be affected by the uh, load uh, seepage so in fact actually uh, for dams uh, the uh, the depth of the pit has to be at least i believe half of the uh, the height i think we shall see that detail uh, uh, in this notes i believe so seepage and deformation uh, deepest substratum, substratum that may be affected by load seepage and deformation of structure the depth and numbers of boreholes depend upon many factors such as the air. so what i was telling you the first we're seeing the depth and numbers uh, especially the numbers upon many factors but one is that you have to make sure that the mapping uh, will give you roughly a bigger the bigger picture the overall overview of the collected uh, the distance between two boreholes may be may be in the range of 20 to 40 meters and in the area if the area is uniform okay if they so also the <coughs> excuse me the the nature of the geological make makeup of the area also is important so you if the so if the if the if there is uniformity 
and then of course you can use this uh, that distancing however if if probably there are so many variables you need to uh, locate the uh, boreholes uh, much closer to each other then additional uh, boreholes uh, may be replaced with your physical methods of exploration to save time and cost. So, like I've told you, while you need to get every detail uh, that is necessary, but it is impossible to do to desync a borehole in every uh, location. So you ne also need to balance between cost and time as well. And so, if you find a uniform place, uh, you're lucky. You can uh, place boreholes between 20 to 40 meters and replace the additional boreholes that maybe you would have su you would have sunk uh, with the geophysical methods. Of course, the understanding here is that you're going to uh, go through the detail from the borehole and also the interpretation of the geophysical methods, and so you come up with the a deeper understanding or the bigger picture uh, concerning the geological makeup of the place. Now, the smallest total uh, number of boreholes suggested for dams of less than 40 meters height is about 3 to 4 on each side of the valley and 2 to 3 on each side of the valley and two to three on the valley floor uh, suitable inclined and crossed uh, the the common rule uh, borehole must be at least half I, I think i said this already of the dam height and a few of them must be at least the dam height so <coughs> so <coughs> most of the boreholes actually uh, must go through up to up to a height a half a height of the dam and a few of them uh, should reach uh, the dam height i think for obvious reasons because the you have seen the example pressures that we were trying to compute uh, at the start of the lesson and so uh, if you remember the uh, actually, you can try this uh, for yourself. Uh, the the pressure, if you remember, the pressure distribution uh, due to a load here. You should already know this uh, because you're 50 years. You're almost graduating. If you have a uniform load there, uh, then we will have... Uh, I think we will have we will have <coughs> a pressure bulb there <coughs> which is a Q so this would be 0 0.9 Q Q and then another pressure bulb uh, no, no, I, I don't know. I'm not sure that that's correct. But uh, yeah, I think you understand what I'm trying to say. Then another pressure bulb there. 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 So the point is, I think that's not correct. So the point here is that uh, this is uh, 0.9 Q and they might go up to maybe 0 0.1 Q. So, so the depth, uh, so this is the depth that you're talking about. So that uh, the depth of excavation have to take care of this. So the load that you're trying to the load of the dam how much uh, deep is it going to affect uh, the substratum that's a point so that determines how much deep you can go and by the rule of the thumb uh, the and that uh, this is based on this ideas the 
<coughs> excuse me <coughs> the restriction of the depth uh, about the half and also the depth of at least the half the dam height and also uh, the full penetration of the de depth of the i mean the uh, drilling up to a depth equal to the height of the dam uh, are uh, derived from these ideas of the uh, distribution uh, the depth of the whole borehole would be deeper if there is permeable substratum so it's even uh, worse if uh, if you have a fault or uh, permeable substratum because you don't want any line of weakness or there is a weathered zone uh, below the foundation because that would be a potential uh, a source of disaster in addition to uh, to borehole drilling excavation of test pits is routinely conducted uh, to visualize the soil conditions near the surface and to take the samples for onward uh, laboratory testing Adits are generally expensive uh, an expensive affair i think i already said that and can be undertaken as part of the large projects or where geological conditions are too complex to be interpreted uh, by geological mapping and borehole drilling. So when uh, when uh, uh, there are factors, uh, the complexity uh, demands it, then you have to do also edits, uh, even though edits uh, we have noted that are expensive. So the information uh, data again uh, from geological and geotechnical investigations are used for soil uh, characterization soil characterization and rock mass quality assessment <coughs> excuse me uh, foundations analysis and treatment stability analysis for the design of surface and subsurface excavations and their support the cost or planning of geological and geotechnical investigations of any project depends upon the size and sensitivity of the project structures and uh, the complexity of the geology. In addition, the details are the cost of investigations are always linked. Uh, the details and the cost on, of investigations are always linked uh, with the stage of the project that is pre-feasibility feasibility design and construction in the pre-feasibility stage already available in uh, uh, literature and information about the geology and topography together with the outcome of the reconnaissance survey are considered sufficient to evaluate the initial in uh, feasibility of the project uh, site so uh, all these are important so like i've said this is an expensive affair so you have to do what is called pre-feasibility that means every available information about the site what is in available in literature you have to review uh, to see the feasibility so if there are red flags you can uh, you can always see them and if the project is feasible is not feasible at that stage you can uh, uh, advise your client appropriately so that they are able to not to waste time uh, and resources as i have said this is an expensive an, uh, an expensive affair in the feasibility stage additional investigations including both surface subsurface and laboratory testing are required to develop geotechnical models at the project structure components in the design and construction stage already developed geotechnical models in the feasibility stage are verified and fine-tuned with additional supplementary information to rule out any deficiency in the interpreted conditions accordingly more detailed surface subsurface investigations are conducted together with in situ and laboratory uh, uh, testing so <coughs> basically uh, in the 
feasibility stage uh, or pre-feasibility you review uh, what is available in literature then you decide okay you can proceed with the project now in the feasibility stage you develop some models that is that will help you into interpreting the uh, physical conditions uh, the geotechnical and ge uh, conditions you find in the field and of course uh, the uh, geotechnical uh, models developed in the feasibility stage are verified and fine-tuned uh, uh, based on on supplementary information so once you develop these models you don't stop there you have to continue to refine uh, by getting more information and seeing uh, that your models do not have any deficiency that would cause your client uh, 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 a loss testing uh, index and engineering properties of soil and rock are measured uh, the basic properties comprise the volume volume weight interaction specific gravity unit weight density and porosity actually this is important uh, porosity because that determines permeability and if there is a line of weakness and then disaster so that's important the porosity hardness water absorption of intact rock and durability and the activity of our aggregate index test comprise the uniaxial compression test that's important the i mean the strength and uh, the point load test <coughs> excuse me the poisons ratio elastic modulus tensile strength sonic velocity of the ro intact rock which are interrelated with phonics uh, with field sonic velocities to judge the quality of the rock uh, so so the, the this is ac actually sonic velocity uh, is also an indirect method uh, for example if the if you know if you know the uh, how can i uh, let me try if if you know this is a solid you can uh, you can put the source of the uh, the source of the sensor and the receiver here so this is the receiver this is the source of the sense uh, source of the sonic so you produce the sonic uh, velocity and it is received here so based on the distance the distance and the time of course you could note the time you, you emit it here and the time it is received there so you so if that is the intact maybe he, you can say this is 4000 meters per second all right now uh, if if for example there is a discontinuity uh, so the sonic wake actually is going to tell us how discontinuous this 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 material so if for example there is some crack or something there's some some imperfection in the in the in the material so as again there's a receiver there and uh, not receiver there is a source i'm sorry there's a source here and there's a receiver and then you emit uh of course the these imperfections are going to interfere with the uh the speed so therefore maybe the speed would just be 2000 so based on the speed of intact so we can say that rock would be would be 40 percent so it would be not 40 percent so the percentage uh how can i say the poro is it porosity the the imperfections uh, so so you can say the rock would be 2000 out of 4000 because it would only be 50 percent intact because of the uh, the the the, ra the ratios of the various uh, sonic wave velocity in the intact and the non-intact rock so the sonic wave velocity somehow helps us to 
uh, to judge how intact a, a rock or a piece of material for that matter is sound or not. So when, when you have 2,000, you probably means there are cavities, there are a lot of imperfections uh, that we need to take care of. Now, this also you need to be careful with this method because it is prone to uh, uh, misleading. Uh, uh, for example, inside water, uh, the, the, uh, the speed is just 15, uh, about 15 uh, meters per second. So that means if you have saturated rock or saturated soil, and you finding that your 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 sonic ve velocity speed is just 15 and that can be very misleading so you need to be sure you, you need to be aware of this uh, wh while using this method so when you get 15 uh, you should make sure you should think uh, either that is water or saturated uh, rock or saturated uh, uh, material and if you don't know this, uh, then the conclusions can be misleading. So the uh, the velocities are interrelated to with the sonic uh, velocity to judge the quality of rock. I've already said the recommended quantity of each testing should be should be at least five to finalize the mean value. Yeah. So <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> In ordinary uh, laboratory circumstances, uh, usually just uh, you usually just uh, uh, do uh, 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 three tests and find the average. But now here you have to do at least five, so that uh, you're able to get an average uh, to use. The importance of the various rock and soil properties has been emphasized by many researchers. For example, the specific gravity is used is is uh, necessary as an input uh, parameter. So, uh, and then uh, uh, these days uh, uh, we don't we don't use uh, uh, a lot of uh, uh, manual and hand design. Uh, they are uh, numerical analysis tools, analysis tools uh, that we can use. So you use, you need to refine all these input parameters to be used for a numerical analysis. The unit weights are necessary to estimate of a burden stress of the design of the underground structures. A numerical analysis. Uh, and also to estimate the rock mass parameters through Hook Brown criteria. Now you all know more Coulomb. So Hook Brown is is a, a failure criterion like the uh, like the more Coulomb. More Coulomb. Uh, more Coulomb is the most basic. So because uh, maybe it has some li uh, limitations, uh, then we. Uh, this is another one, uh, best especially suitable for rocks. Now they are generally affected by composite minerals weathering and alteration, with more weathered altered samples having lower unit weight. The water absorption test provides measure of permeability in the rock that is later very useful for grouting work or construction stage. So because the permeability in fact is very important uh, because uh, when for example this is your uh, the and these are several fault lines, let's say. And you have determined that this is where you want to uh, to do your dam. So once you fault, you, you find that you map the fault.
so uh, I've said like, permeability is important because when you need to seal all the all the fault lines, uh, then you need to inject uh, grout and into the ground, and the ability of grout to flow and seal all the loop or all the fault lines, of course, is tied to the permeability. So this way. I said permeability is important. The sonic velocity compression wave values are generally used as indicators of degree of weathering, yes, uh, fracturing and soundness of the rock, as well as compared with the in situ uh, field measurements that relate to uh, the extent of fissuring and discontinuities of the rock mass. I think already, <coughs> already. Uh, elucidated about this. Uh, if if we know that the velocity in intact rock is so much, and the velocity in uh, with in uh, the one with the deformities is so much, then somehow you can estimate or figure out uh, roughly the uh, level of soundness or the degree of fissuring. Uh, the uh, sonic velocity are correlated with the modulus moduli, uh, and that's the shear and Young's modulus. And you, uh, the uh, UCS is unconfined compression uh, uh, test strength due to different mineralogy of rocks and has numerical correlation with the angle of friction. Uh, this should be phi. Uh, Phi and the cohesion. So the uniaxial uh, so the compression test is used to measure the unconfined uh, and cohesion. The uniaxial uh, compression test. It's used to measure the unconfined uh, compressive strength. So this is what we call UC. This is what is called UCS. Elastic constants, Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio of the intact rock. Uh, the uniaxial compression test has also numerical relation uh, with the uh, with the cohesion friction angle phi, I think this is not right. This should be phi. A rock stress factor A. Uh, this is uh, uh, from Brown, and the load uh, strength index. Uh, uh, the modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio are necessary as input for numerical analysis. I've said these days we don't rely so much on. Uh, 